laboratory diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2 infection. As we know from the previous lecture, SARS-CoV-2 infection follows an incubation phase followed by a prodromal phase, an acute phase and then a convalescent phase. The initial phase is characterized by high viremia. The antibody response starts within few weeks, initially in the form of an IgM response, later in the form of an IgG response. So in an index case, RT-PCR may be used in the early phase of illness and IgM and IgG may be used during the convalescent phase of the illness. The common specimens that are used for isolation of virus are the nasopharyngeal secretions. A nasopharyngeal swab is inserted up to 8 to 10 cm into the nasopharynx and an oropharyngeal swab is sweeped across the translat pillars posterior to the oropharynx. Usually, a plastic cannula shaft with a synthetic decron or a polyester swabs are used. Alginate or wood based shafts are better avoided. This picture demonstrates the depth and the angle of insertion for a nasopharyngeal swab. The other specimen that can be used are bronchalveolar lavage and sputum. Isolation from feces, blood and saliva is also feasible. Several viral transport media are being used, the most common being Hanks barren salt solution with heat inactivated bovine serum. The genomic material of SARS-CoV-2 codes for several structural and non-structural protein. One of the key proteins is the RNA-dependent polymerase, which is essential during the replication cycle of SARS-CoV-2. RNA polymerase is error-prone and is a key determinant of mutagenicity in SARS-CoV-2 virus. In reverse transcriptase PCR, two or more conserved portions of the genome is targeted. Commonly, the ORF gene, RDRP, E, N, S or M genes are targeted. N and GG are usually used for screening and confirmation is based on RNA-dependent RNA polymerase or open trading frame sequences. The steps of RT-PCR include denaturing of the primary RNA strand, use of reverse transcriptase to form cDNA, annealing with cDNA-RNA hybrid formation and extension with DNA amplification and addition of fluorescent dyes to detect the amplified DNA. The usual turnaround time of RT-PCR is around 4 to 6 hours. BAL, sputum, nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal swabs are commonly used in RT-PCR. The sensitivity is about 95% and specificity is about 100%. Sensitivity tends to decline with advanced illness. In real-time RT-PCR, the detection and amplification happens in real-time. Tachman probes or SYBR green dyes are used in a single step process in order to obtain the results in a real time manner. Pooled RT-PCR is one where multiple samples are pooled and tested with same RT-PCR. If it is negative, all samples are negative and can be discarded. If positive, then individual samples are tested. This is suitable in conditions with low pretest probability as in low prevalence area and testing immigrants from green zone countries. Newer tests that are being used are the Expert SARS Express, which is a cartridge based test, TrueNAT, which is a chip based test, and other rapid tests like About ID Now and CRISPR. Expert SARS Express is a nucleic acid amplification test that helps in qualitative detection of SARS CoV 2 from respiratory specimen. The E gene and the N gene are usually targeted. The turnaround time is usually 45 minutes and is generally used in places where urgent procedures are planned and we cannot wait for RT-PCR results. TrueNAT is a chip-based qualitative RT-PCR assay which again uses E-gene and RNA-dependent RNA polymerase gene as targets. The rough turnaround time is 45 minutes and it does not require any biosafety level precautions. It is cheaper than real-time assays. Feluda is a new test that uses CRISPR-Cas9 technology. It is cheap and has good sensitivity and specificity. It is important to remember that RT-PCR can be positive for months as the dead virus continue to be isolated. There is no need of negative PCR for de-isolation of a patient. Cycle threshold or CT value denotes the number of cycles needed to amplify the viral RNA. It indicates high viral load in the collected sample. Hence, 
the collection method per se can determine a high or low CT value. Recent as well as advanced infection may have low CT values. CT value has no role in predicting either the severity of illness or the treatment pathway. Rapid antigen tests are point of care test which target N and S antigens. The turnaround time of these tests is 15 minutes. If positive, it does not need RT-PCR confirmation as it has high specificity of about 99%. However, if negative and if the clinical suspicion is strong, it needs to be followed with a RT-PCR. The variable sensitivity of rapid antigen test is due to variable viral load and time since symptom onset. Antibody tests are generally not used during acute COVID illness. It is indicated in those with protracted course to diagnose multisystem inflammatory syndrome of childhood and in zero surveys and to assess the response post vaccination. It can be done by rapid test or by ELISA method. The common laboratory findings which are seen in SARS CoV 2 infection include lymphopenia, thrombocytopenia, elevated CRP and elevated procalcitonin, ESR, D dimer, LDH, and ferritin may be elevated to variable levels in SARS-CoV-2 infection. Lymphopenia and relative neutrophilia is consistently reported in SARS-CoV-2 infection. A neutrophil lymphocyte ratio of more than 5 is considered to be significant. NLR increases post-steroid therapy, hence it is very important to check a baseline before initiating steroid therapy in a patient. CRP is another marker which has been consistently high in SARS-CoV-2 infection. The levels are comparable across different age group and different pathological conditions. It is rapid and inexpensive and it does correlate with severity of illness. It has also been observed that a reduction in CRP by 50% or more within 72 hours of initiating corticosteroid therapy potentially predicts inpatient mortality. Thus, it may serve as an early biomarker of response to corticosteroid therapy in patients with COVID-19. Interleukin-6 is another marker that is used to predict disease severity and mortality. Serial values rather than single value are useful in predicting severity. It is important to note that delayed sample processing per se can increase the level of interleukin-6. The additional benefit that interleukin-6 provides over CRP is still debatable. There are many settings where inter routine interleukin-6 is not available and in those settings it is better to go with CRP level rather than interleukin-6. Ferritin and LDH are non-specific markers of inflammation and are elevated in COVID-19. They provide similar information to CRP and have no additional benefit. In rare cases where there is hemophagocytosis or where Multisystem inflammatory syndrome is suspected. Ferritin may be useful. D-dimer is another controversial marker and elevated levels at admission are associated with mortality. A rising D-dimer, potent COVID-associated coagulopathy. The cutoff to guide anticoagulation therapy in a particular patient is still not clear. Milder cases of COVID-19 do not need any laboratory investigations. Laboratory investigations may need to be repeated in moderate disease every 72 hours and in severe disease every 24 to 48 hours. It may also be necessary to repeat whenever there is clinical worsening or within 48 hours of initiation of any immunomodulatory therapy. All patients do not need routine testing with RT-PCR before discharge. However, in those with immunocompromised state, and those who have had severe or critical illness may be considered for RT-PCR testing before discharge. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe us and follow us for new updates.